everyone, it's Katrina. Some birds do some really strange things. From self-destruction to traveling so far they can get to the moon and back, here are eight strange and fascinating bird behaviors. Number 8. The Self-Destructive Birds of Jatinga Every year on dark, moonless nights after monsoon season, usually in September and October, 44 bird species become disoriented and begin flying erratically in Jatinga, India. This strange behavior occurs between 6 and 9.30 p.m., with birds plunging into torches and lights throughout the small town of 2,500 people. Thousands of birds have flown to their deaths in the last century. India's most renowned ornithologist can't explain why so many birds become confused and unintentionally kill themselves within this 1,500 by 200 meter strip of land. But there are some clues. Birds are known to become confused by bright light, and one theory holds that they're attracted to the lights of Jatinga as a source of flight stabilization, while factors like high altitude, high winds, and fog contribute to the bird's disorientation. Another theory posits that the magnetic qualities of the region's underground water are affected by the weather, and the changes following monsoon season cause birds to become bamboozled. One certainty is that many of these avian deaths are ultimately caused by villagers who believe the confused birds are spirits flying from the sky to terrorize them. Thankfully, these killings have decreased by 40% since wildlife and bird societies in India started visiting Jatinga and educating people about the disorientation. But an answer for why the birds behave so strangely in the first place is yet to be found. Number 7. Storks That Run Away From Home One bird species seems to live up to the age-old saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Back in 1993, scientists studying three breeding colonies of the European white stork in Spain discovered that around 40% of nestlings abandoned their parents before reaching independence and were adopted by neighboring stork families. Nest switching was correlated with decreased feeding by the natal parents and increased aggression among siblings, especially as they learned to fly. In most cases, especially in larger broods, the older chicks were the most affected by the desire to leave. Chicks who abandoned their parents sought new homes with younger and fewer chicks, making for a less aggressive environment than the nest they came from. Their food intake also increased as a result of relocating. The non-adopted or resident chicks tended to experience slowed growth and decreased feeding after the arrival of a chick from another nest. It's possible that this caused resident chicks to become aggressive towards outsiders and that this behavior prevented adoption. Number 6. The Mile High Bird Club? Swifts are small, soot-colored birds with some noteworthy achievements under their belts. For one, it's the fastest flying species on Earth. They also spend a lot of time in the air. In 2016, scientists tracking the movement of swifts noticed that some of the birds didn't stop once while migrating. Altogether, swifts spend 10 months out of the year in flight. Even before the study, researchers tried figuring out how swifts make time for life-sustaining activities, such as sleeping and eating while remaining airborne for months on end. All signs point toward these things occurring in the sky while swifts are flying. Swifts sustain by snacking on insects and sleeping for short periods while gliding along in mid-air. Since all organisms we know of need to sleep to some extent, we can only assume if they sleep at all it must be while they're airborne," said Anders Hedenstrom, the ecologist who led the 2016 study. Although swifts land to nest, one rumor claims that they've mastered the act of copulating in mid-flight. With how much time they spend in the air and how much scientists still have to learn about the bird, this seems plausible, but it's simply not true. Writer Elizabeth Palermo set the record straight in a 2013 Live Science article stating that despite rumors to the contrary, it isn't possible for birds to mate while in flight. Number 5. Starling Murmuration a murmuration occurs when hundreds or thousands of starlings fly together in mesmerizing, intricately coordinated patterns. Murmurations fascinate both the amateur birdwatcher and the experts, who wanted to understand these impressively choreographed flight patterns. Researchers learned that a starling pays attention to seven of its neighbors within the flock. But why seven? In 2013, scientist George F. Young and some colleagues set out to find the answer to that question. They analyzed still shots from videos of starling murmurations and applied a complex mathematical application to the flocks. The researchers determined that seven was the magic number for balancing individual effort with group cohesiveness. 
By focusing on that amount of neighbors, the birds create the dynamic system of combined parts known as a murmuration. Starlings are essentially an invasive species in North America, with a population numbering around 200 million. Because of their abundance, some people regard them as menacing or aggressive. The captivating murmurations created by starlings remind us that there's beauty to be found in all animals, including this underappreciated species. Number 4. The World's Longest Migration Nearly half of known bird species are migratory, and threats have grown as their habitat is destroyed or altered year after year. Scientists are racing to learn more about birds' migratory patterns through chips and sensors. Xavi Bo, a photographer from Barcelona, has used a less invasive method by combining science, technology, and creativity to show birds' movements and patterns as they fly through the air. Xavi Bo focuses on birds, his great passion, in order to capture in a single time frame the shapes they generate when flying, making visible the invisible. Big thanks to Xavi for sharing his photographs with us. The Arctic Tern holds the world record for the longest migration of any known animal. This 4-ounce bird travels 44,000 miles annually between Greenland and Antarctica. Arctic terns live for around 30 years. Throughout its lifetime, it migrates an estimated 1.5 million miles, the equivalent to three trips to the moon and back. Researchers were largely in the dark about exactly how far the Arctic tern traveled until 2010, when new technology developed by the British Antarctic Survey enabled them to use tracking devices on the small birds for the first time. The study was led by Karsten Egvang of the Greenland Institute of Natural Resources. The scientists learned that the Arctic tern travels twice as far as they previously thought. Before embarking on their journey southward across the tropics to the bottom of the world, they stop in the open Atlantic Ocean for about a month to fuel up on fish and small crustaceans. On their way back north, Arctic terns zigzag from Antarctica to Africa, South America, and the Arctic. This seemingly erratic route cuts their journey by several thousand miles. Nobody knows for sure why the Arctic terns' migration is so lengthy, but some scientists have their suspicions. In an interview with National Geographic, study leader Carson explained, My gut feeling is that it's because of the rich polar feeding grounds that they travel so far for. Number 3. Pre-Migration Binge Eating To prepare for the long journey ahead, some migratory bird species engage in a feeding frenzy called hyperphagia. Some hummingbird species, for example, are known to sometimes double their weight when they're getting ready to migrate. The goal is to store energy by putting on fat. It's an efficient fuel that's easy to store and powers birds from point A to point B more effectively than protein or carbohydrates. Burning fat has the added bonus of producing twice as much water as burning carbohydrates or protein, preventing dehydration. Migratory birds typically begin hyperphagia in late summer, before heading south for the winter, and in late winter, before returning north. To endure its migration, a 3-ounce hummingbird gains around 2 grams of fat, consuming up to 2,000 small insects and its body weight in sugar water or nectar daily. Instinct lets a bird know when they've put on enough weight to migrate safely. Number 2. Effects of Climate Change on Migration In recent years, tropical and subtropical bird species have increasingly popped up in places far north of their usual range, as well as to higher elevations. Moreover, the patterns of migratory birds have changed noticeably. In both cases, these unusual movements are thought to be propelled by climate change. A 2012 study by researchers from Duke University showed that while birds are migrating upward amidst record global temperature increases, they aren't moving fast enough to keep up with the rapidly changing planet. This is possibly because the birds are following slow-moving vegetation patterns which are guided by seed dispersal rather than relocating based on the climate itself. Like many other animals affected by climate change, the choices for these birds may ultimately come down to staying where they are and eventually overheating or fleeing to cooler regions, which often means to higher elevations and running out of habitat. Migratory birds are responding to the transforming atmosphere by migrating and breeding earlier. Scientists are still struggling to fully understand how climate change impacts bird migration and movement. As they strive to figure it out, sightings of tropical and subtropical species in uncharacteristic places continue. In August 2018, ornithologists recorded the first ever arrival of a pink subtropical bird called the roseate spoonbill to Minnesota. Last month, a suspected brown booby was spotted in Cornwall, England. 
This large, yellow-footed seabird typically dwells near the warm Atlantic waters of the Caribbean and off the Venezuelan coast. Number 1. A bird's age can be determined by its song. Earlier this year, National Geographic reported on researchers and ornithologists who study birds in Panama's Soberania National Park, which is famous among bird-watching destinations. Have you been there? Let me know in the comments below! They estimate the ages of birds based on their songs and by playing the songs of birds of different ages and observing their reaction. At younger ages, bird songs are more squawky, becoming more confident and better tuned as the bird grows. Adult males vocalize a low-pitched, loud song to defend their territory, and sometimes adult females pitch in. Birds often respond to intruders by singing backwards. Understanding bird songs is an ongoing learning process for the researchers. One thing they're trying to figure out is whether adult male birds are more worried about older or younger intruders. They also want to learn if female territory holders are more or less tolerant of male invaders based on their age. The researchers hope to better understand the relationship between bird songs and predators, and other ways birds communicate through song. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed today's video! What other intriguing creatures would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!